It's very rare that I stand up to talk about these things without holding one in my hand. So. My family and I live with homing pigeons. My husband, Dushan, breeds and races long distance homing pigeons, racing champions that have ancestors in the villages of the old country. And I breed white homing doves. As a celebrant and a speaker, I bring them with me and I create rituals for people in releasing them. As a culture, we in this country are much better at supporting each other and gathering things to ourselves than in letting go. But there is enormous power in moments of releasing in mindfully letting go of our grips on things, but also relationships, habits, commitments, beliefs when they no longer serve us. The homing pigeon is of the same species as the rock dove, but with the addition of thousands of generations of additional targeted breeding for homing ability, for endurance, intelligence, and aerobic efficiency, they are now one of the best in the world. Over time, their hearts have grown to twice the size of those of wild pigeons. These birds have been partners with humans now for over 5,000 years of recorded history, as messengers in peacetime and in war, as sources of food and of ingredients for gunpowder and fertilizer, sculpted as biological art, raced in competitions, and used as therapy animals and kept as companions. In our home on the river, they still hold many of these roles, and our children were named by them and will grow to adulthood learning from and caring for them. Dushan's racers fly home from as far as 650 miles in a day, and he waits for them. When they appear as tiny dots in the evening sky, all of the hair stands up on his arms. But white doves also serve as symbols in every one of the Earth's great spiritual traditions, representing in turn peace and spirit, purity, faith, going home, freedom, and unending love. So it is not surprising that in living with them, they keep the big questions of life alive for me, morning after morning. At the same time that they exist as the bird of peace, they are arguably also the preeminent birds of war. For centuries, their ability to cross torn battlefields, mountains, waterways, and distances at high speeds have given tactical advantages, signaled advances, and saved thousands of lives. In World War II, an army pigeon named G.I. Joe arrived just in time to call off the American bombing of an Italian village, only just recovered from German occupation by the British 169th Infantry Brigade. Over a thousand soldiers and a village of families were saved. Some decorated army pigeons brought in their messages badly injured, sometimes even on foot. Now I take the birds and the big questions into schools and other organizations working with teachers and students, spiritual leaders and entrepreneurs, law enforcement, military, emergency response personnel, the terminally ill and the temporarily incarcerated, leading people into being with what they are truly committed to, what is actually essential, and what is everything else. Because of these birds and as a celebrant, I am invited into powerful and vulnerable moments in other people's lives, weddings, celebrations, and death. These are the big ones that Westerners have a lot of rituals for. The meanings are clean here because these birds explode with joy in flight. They love to go home, and they choose each other for life. I really do love the memorials because each is a portrait illuminating the quality of the life that was lived. It's incentive, and people in Western cultures need more help with meeting death than in some cultures. The inner softening that the presence of creatures provides also helps build that need and lets people move into a place beyond anger, anger awkwardness, and fear. I also really love the other times, the creative moments outside of our normal traditions, which are therefore perhaps the rituals that we need the most. So we each need to invent these rituals to suit our own particular circumstances. It is a deeply practical, illuminating gift that we as humans have. What if we did have more common, beautiful, and meaningful rituals marching change through the other stages of life? Through pregnancy, puberty, uprooting, separation, apology and forgiveness, setting boundaries and the many, many, many times that we grow up and all of the other manifestations of letting go. Because sometimes the need to mark change is there and we ignore it, we pass over it, or we run away from it. As more people step bravely into these places, light and dark, mark these moments meaningfully, there is a clear path for each of us as we step into our own dark night, looking for release of that which no longer serves us. It is the housekeeping of a life. I have felt the tendrils of living with these birds 
thread down through nearly every aspect of my life. The path where they lead me deepens and illuminates my roles as an educator, a celebrant and a speaker, a sustainable farmer, a historian, a businesswoman, and a wife and a mother, as a personal coach and an animal therapist, as a committed witness to loss and grief, as an artist, a singer, and a friend. They have offered me beauty and joy, but also humor and surprise, and a deep and universal nonverbal expression that I can both feel and offer of love and release. Their symbolic burden is ancient and rich. Sometimes the answers are not in the finding, but in opening our grasp, so I can come full circle in letting go, even in this. Sometimes I walk out to the loft alone and for no reason and take a single bird down into the meadow. I can acknowledge 5,000 years of his heroic history and partnership in peace and combat. Centuries of passionate selective breeding, of racing purses worth millions of dollars, and even the wealth of celebrations of death and love and release that these birds and I have created. The powerfully intimate and unfolding moments that we have been present to. I can let all of these go too. Just let them slide off me like rain. Feel the hay-scented wind pouring down over my skin of my shoulders and the sunlit heat in my hair. Just breathing. And outside even the duality of human and bird, give in to a simple wholeness of the exaltation that lies at the intersection of the sacred and the profane, the absurd and the inevitable. Warm palms married to a quiet heartbeat. And then we release to the sky the simple gift that we can give ourselves again and again of letting go.